My name is William Justice, and today we're going to do some tracking experiments with DaVinci Resolve and Infusion. Um, I have a few projects I'm thinking about doing and wanted to try some stuff out, and so I thought I'd uh, try it out and let you know what I learned. We're going to do some things with the point tracker, and then we're going to try the planar tracker and do a little bit of head tracking. Um, that's why I got these dots on my face, if you can see those right there. I was curious to see if uh, those made a difference or not, so I'm going to try the, uh, just a little bit of head tracking with the dots and without, and we'll see what it does. Okay, Fusion has several different ways to track points. Um, the basic one is with a tracker where it tracks individual points, and that's what we're doing here. Um, you can attach an object to one of these points, maybe a video, text, um, lots of different things. You can even attach a particle emitter. And we can use those points to do things like maybe connect a line between them. These uh, sticks are a little bit more difficult to manage than I thought. But with more than two points, we can actually create a shape. So we've got a triangle here. We can use straight lines, or we can actually have some uh, curved lines. We've got four points now. So let's do some corner pinning. I'm going to take these and put them out like this. And when we have, OK, this is not as easy as it looks. All right, we got our, we got our four points now. And we can track these points. And when we have them tracked, we can corner pin and take any video or image and put it right in that spot where, those, where the points are. And it'll automatically stretch and size to fit where our points are. And we can also take a frame and put a frame around it. And we're going to use it just like we did before with the shape. We're going to take the border and put that around there. I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second. So I'm going to move my head around. And then I'm going to take these off and move my head around again. And we're going to see if having those on there makes any difference at all. OK, let's get these dots off. So now we're going to do a similar thing with no tracking points. And we're going to try to track my forehead or my head and see if we can get uh, similar results. If you like my videos and are interested in DaVinci Resolve, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Comment below and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get started with some experiments. We're going to do individual point tracking, do a corner pinning, and then we'll move to the head tracking and see how it turned out. OK, so I got these uh, rubber bouncy balls and stuck them on sticks and kind of used those uh, for the tracking points. I wanted something that had a pretty good contrast and stuck out. So here's a clip where I'm holding these sticks with the balls on it, and we're going to use these for um, setting up our tracking. So what we want to do is get into Fusion. So let's right click on this clip and say New Fusion Clip. And with the playhead over the clip, let's click Fusion at the bottom. OK, we're going to start out with a, with a basic tracker. We're going to track this ball right here in the upper left. So with media in one selected, hit Control Space and search for Tracker. And we'll add the tracker in right there. So I have a whole video on tracking. Um, and really, tracking is it's not always precise. Sometimes you kind of have to play around with it a little bit and try some things out. So um, what I figured out works good on these, if you put the tracking point kind of just right inside that ball, um, this is the pattern right here, and the outside part in the dotted line is the search area where it's looking for the pattern as it tracks through. So when we put the tracker position here, um, just real quick, you click on this little dot in the upper left to zoom in and move it, and then you can just grab the lines to resize it. So once that's set up, once you have the position set up, you go to the, actually we need to go to the first frame, let's go ahead and drag it right there because we want to track the whole thing. So we're going to start at the beginning set the tracker position, and then click the Track Forward button here in the, on the upper right of the inspector. And that's going to track the position of this throughout the clip. OK, looks like that worked pretty well. So the uh, tracking position is going to follow the ball. And you can click, this, click in this tracker list, and there's a lot of options down here. I have, an, I have another video where I go into a little bit more detail on how to use these to get better tracking. Sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error to get the track to work the way you want. Um, this one looks pretty good. So for each frame, it saves the position of this point. So how can we use this? The, the easiest way is to click the tracker, use the match move function. So there's an operation right here. It's in the second tab over here called operation, and we're going to set it to match move. Then all we need to do is take a graphic and drag it in and take the, this graphic and put it right into the tracker position. Now the movement of the graphic we added is going to match the movement of the orange ball up there. Now if we wanted to reposition this and put it on top of the ball, we just you can use a transform node. We'll add that in. 
and take it and slide it right over. Okay, that's that's a really basic tracking. So there's some other stuff we can do. Um, obviously, you can attach anything into this. It could be text, a video clip, um, whatever you want. So let's do some text, and we're going to track. We're going to use the tracking data a little bit different way. So let's take the text and drag it right in and merge it in, and we'll say tracker. So that's our text is tracker. We could take the, the text and put it into the tracker right here to do the match move. We're going to do it a little bit different way. We're going to take the text and slide it in here. And let's add a transform node. Now, one of the things about the tracker is, let's go take a look at the tracker. It can actually track multiple points at the same time. I'm gonna show you how to use this in just a second. But this data is actually published so we can use it. So let's go back over to the transform and right click on the center property and choose connect to. And you'll see that tracker one path shows up and we do track one path position. And there we have it, we have the text is associated with the tracker. So the two ways to do it, we can use the match move or you can right click on here and use the connect to. And if we want to move it around again, we can do it, put another transform node in here and slide it down and move it over. Okay, so there we go. We're tracking two different objects in two different ways to this position of the orange ball. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to draw a line. So this tracker position is saved. So we have it right, you can see it right down here. There's an X, Y position that for each frame, this changes. And this is the data that's published. And we can use this to set points on a shape. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and disconnect this stuff right now. Go back to the tracker, go back to frame one. And we're gonna, we're gonna draw a triangle between these three balls right here. So let's add in two more trackers. So we have tracker two and three. Tracker two, let's put it on this green ball right here. And tracker three, we'll put it on the other green ball. Just like that. And we'll hit the track forward button and it's gonna track the position of the new trackers. Okay, tracking is complete. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna just put a basic shape in here and then we're gonna use the positions of each of these trackers. So we'll put a background in and put that on top of here. We'll add a, uh, We'll add a polygon mask and we're just going to make a triangle. It doesn't really matter right now. So we have a triangle there and let's bring the opacity down a little bit so we can kind of see through it. What we want to do is be able to attach each of these points to one of the trackers. To do that, we need to publish these points. So hit the select all and right click on any of the points. There's really a lot in here that you can do, but what we're going to do is we're going to go down to polygon one polyline and choose publish publish points. What that does is it takes each of these points and allows us to control this exact position of it. So you can see this is the first point we can control the X and Y position. And once we have this point here, we can attach it to a tracker. So we'll right click on the point, this point zero, connect to tracker one path position. And that move that point one to match that top position. Let's go ahead and do that for the other two points. Connect to tracker path two position, connect to and path three position. And there we go, we have our uh, a basic tr a triangle that's set up to match the movement of the trackers. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is the corner pinning. So for corner pinning, you need four points and we only have three. So let's add in one more tracker and we can just disable these temporarily. And we'll take this tracker four and put it on the ball down here. Actually, let's go to the first frame, put it on the ball. Adjust it real quick. Let's see if this works and track forward. All right, so we have all four points being tracked now. So what we can do is go back to the operation and we're gonna change it from match move to corner position. When we change the operation to corner position, you'll see that it connects up all of the trackers, all of our four trackers. Okay, so once the corner pinning is set up and we have each of the positions, all we need to do is take a video graphic or background and attach it to the trackers. So let's take a background just for, for sample. And we're going to take the output of that and put it into the foreground of the tracker. Let's turn the, down the opacity so we can see through just a little bit. And what this did is it took the background and stretches it to fit the corner positions. And as the positions move, the background moves. Okay, so to, to do the uh, outline around this, all we got to do is take the output of this background and put it here. This is the triangle that we set up. Let's go ahead and set that to white. And we're gonna um, 
click on the polygon, we're going to uncheck solid, and we're going to add up a border on it. So there's a little border around there, but you see it's only a triangle. So all we need to do is add another point. So we'll click the option up here to add a point and take a point and just drag it around here. So we have our, we have our point. Now it's not doing much because we need, we need to publish it. So we right click on the point polyline and we'll go back to publish points. And you see, we have our next point down here. We'll right click on that, connect to tracker path four position. And there we're done. We have an outline around the corner pin positions. It's time for the head tracking. Um, I, I honestly, I still need to do a lot more experimentation with this. Um, I really just tried a few things out. It's a, a lot of trial and error with this one. Um, so this is the, uh, my head without any of the tracking points on it. So we're going to right click on the clip, say new fusion clip and click fusion at the bottom. Let's set up some tracking with the planar tracker. We're going to take a DaVinci Resolve logo and try to slap it right on my forehead. So we'll click the media pool, drag in the logo and connect it up. Okay. So here, here's our basic setup. So what we want to do is we want to track my head position. So let's go to the first frame with media in one selected, hit control space and search for planar tracker. And we'll add that in. So the planar tracker works by you give it a region and it tries to figure out the movement of that region. There's a lot of different options and this is something you kind of have to play with and try out some different things. I've tried quite a bit with this. The tracking doesn't always work. It's a lot of trial and error, but once you get it, it can do, it can do a pretty good job. So for this one, I'm going to just click around this region of where my forehead is kind of into my hairline. And we're going to track that. With that selected, we're going to go to the first frame. We're going to choose hybrid point area. And there's a lot of different motion types you can select. Um, if the tracking isn't working, selecting an easier motion type, like either uh, translation, rotation, scale, or just translation, it tends to work better because there's less things it's looking at. But we're going to uh, try to see if we can get the perspective working. And hit track forward, and it's going to go through the video clip and track the position of the region that we selected. Okay, so it's starting to mess up. So you can see right in here, um, it, the region got a lot smaller, so it thinks it's uh, thinks it's not as tall compared to how it started out, which is right here. Um, let's go ahead and attach the graphic and see what we have. So we, to do that, we click on the planar tracker and hit create planar transform. And this has all the tracking and movement data in it. So to get it to apply, we just need to slide it into where the media in is. And we'll hit two on the merge. And there's our image. You can see that as we play the video, we're getting some movement in our image. Um, and one of the things you'll notice is that it kind of gets freaked out a little bit. The reason about it is this because the size of our DaVinci Resolve logo doesn't match the size of our composition. So it's trying to scale it to the composition, um, which gets it messed up a little bit. So let's take a background in here and we're going to take the media in and put it into the background. Let's take a look at that. So that means that the size of what's going to be, we're going to be putting into the planar tracker matches the size of our compositions. Let's take the merge two and put it into the planar tracker. And with the background, let's take the alpha all the way down. And it kind of glitches out a little bit when I turn my head too much. Just looking up and looking down. So um, if we wanted to move this, we can go to the merge and let's move it up right onto where my forehead is. And see what we got. If, my, if I move my head too far, it kind of gets confused a little bit. I got confused when I was looking up and down. It looked like the perspective went the wrong way. And obviously the image is getting a little bit more distorted here. So it's, it's kind of on there. And I think this is something, um, you know, I could play with it with some of these other settings, uh, maybe probably getting rid of perspective. It would definitely work a lot better if we just did translation, rotation, and scale. Um, so let's try that real quick. Let's get rid of this planar tracker. We'll get this one. We'll go back to the first frame with the same region. And let's just do a translation, rotation, and scale and track that one. That yeah, kind of messed up there. But what we can do is we'll just see what, how it started out. We'll do the creative planar transform, slide that in right there. It looks like it sticks to my head a little bit better, but it's not getting the perspective um, when I move my head side to side. Okay. So, and I played around with this quite a few things. I, I tried to do different areas of my forehead. Some worked better. Um, some didn't work at all. Um, trial and error, you got to play with it. So let's uh, see if the tracking points make any difference at all. Okay, here's a clip with the, uh, the tracking points on it. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to right click on this, say new fusion clip, click fusion at the bottom, bring in our logo, go to the media library, slide in the DaVinci Resolve logo, 
and we'll connect it right there. Okay, so there's our logo. Let's add the tracker, media in one selected, hit to control space and type planner tracker and go to our first frame. And we'll just hide the logo for now so we don't have to see it. So we're gonna put, with the planner tracker selected, we're gonna draw right around these tracking dots. Zoom out a bit and we're gonna choose hybrid point area, stick with perspective and track forward. Okay, this looks like it's doing a lot better job sticking to where it's supposed to be on my head. So let's, uh, hopefully this will work for us. Let's uh, go ahead and we can stop it. That's far enough along. And we're gonna do the same thing with the media. We're gonna take a background and put the media into the background to make sure it's the same size as the composition. Take the alpha down on the background. Okay, there's our, there's our logo. Select the planar tracker, hit create planar transform and slide that in right there. And with the merge, let's move it into position. So we'll move it up. Try to get it right on where my forehead is. Okay, let's see if it's uh, more sticky this time. Yeah, that looks like it's doing a lot better job. It's kind of uh, changing the perspective. It's a little sticking to my head. Yeah, so anyway, that looks like it's doing a lot better job sticking to my head. Now, one thing I, I did notice is I tried this on some of the clips where I was talking and there was a little bit of a problem. You know, I'm, I, you know, I'm just experimenting, so I don't know how to do tracking here, but Right here, if you see that uh, as I talk, my forehead kind of does a little forehead wrinkle thing, and these dots got closer together, which caused the logo to kind of expand and contract, which was kind of a weird effect as I was talking. Um, right here, I'm not talking, so my forehead's not moving as much, but these dots on the, fore the forehead, the way I positioned them, definitely um, had an effect. Um, it was picking up the movement as I was talking, it was just moving my forehead. Anyway, overall, I think that did better. Um, this, I'm going to keep playing around with this. I think this is going to get me closer to what I was wanting to do for this one project. So maybe you'll see something coming soon that's using this technique. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you like my videos, please subscribe, comment below, like the video. I really appreciate everyone's support. Don't forget to comment below and let me know what you think. I love to hear everybody's comments. And I will see you guys soon. Lots more videos coming up.